Today we're going to be talking about next the PCI Gen 5 graphics cards can have power excursions up to 1800 watts but ATX 3.0 power supplies can keep your PC running smoothly. Recently PC World did an interview with Intel's platform power specialist Stephen Eastman to talk about the brand new ATX 3.0 power supply standard. The new ATX 3.0 standard brings a lot to the table, such as the latest PCIe Gen 5 uh, 12VH power connectors, which will power the future generation graphics cards and other PCIe devices. One of the main things that ATX 3.0 power supplies will be addressing is power excursions or power spikes, as they are simply put. As per the PCIe SIG, a graphics card has the capability of exceeding its maximum sustained power by three times. This is particularly true for the brand new standards and for cards such as NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 Ti, which has a TGP rating of 450 watts. This could mean that the card can have spikes up to 1350 watts. There are reports that the upcoming generation of GPUs will require up to 600 watts of power and that would indicate up to 1800 watt power spikes. These power spikes generally only last 100 microseconds at most but can lead to disruption in PC crashes. To avoid this from happening, power supplies have been manufactured with enough extra capacitors to prevent the system from sagging power. You're also going to have a pretty significant issue on mining rigs in this particular case because even if the power supplies that you're purchasing are going to be the ATX 3.0 power supplies, you are still going to have to worry about basically tripping breakers at this point, especially if you have multiple on a rig. Now keep in mind that is going to be dependent on like basically if you're following the 80% rule, which actually might need to be adjusted in this particular case, and then whether you're on 120 or 240 and that sort of thing, because if you have essentially like a 20 amp 120 setup, you're really only going to be able to go up to 2400 watts somewhere around there. So it's pretty concerning that even if you ran two of these things, uh, even if it's just a hundred microseconds, that could be enough on a traditional home plug to go ahead and trip your breaker in theory. So we got to be really careful with these when we get them for mining. <clears throat> Here's the details coming from the interview. It says with the new PCIe 5.0 connector and ATX 3.0 Intel and the PCI SIG address, what both, uh, and well, I don't know this one, emphatically, euphemistically, there we go. I, I always say euphemistic, not euphemistically. Anyways, call power excursions. You might recognize it by the less sugar-coated term power spike. The PCI SIG has basically outlined the capability of a GPU to exceed the maximum sustained power of the card by three times. That means a 600 watt card on a PCIe 5.0 12VH PWR connector is allowed to spike to 1800 watts for 100 microseconds. To help smooth out these extremely short power excursions, a power supply has to be designed with enough extra capacitors to prevent the system from sagging power and possibly crashing the PC. By Intel's estimates, a 300 watt GPU on a properly designed ATX 3.0 could be supported with a 750 watt power supply with 300 watts for the CPU and another 150 watts for the rest of the hardware in the box. If you were to try to adapt an existing ATX 2.0 power supply to run that same 300 watt GPU, you could potentially need a power supply at 1100 watts to support the GPU CPU and account for the power excursions Intel believes. This will likely depend on the older PSU design as well as how often that GPU will make those high power excursions. In an interesting comparison, it is said that a 750 watt power supply based on the ATX 3.0 standard will provide the same output as an older ATX 2.0 standard. 
This is only for a 300 watt GPU. And as you go up, you definitely require a beefier PSU, but still even for a GPU requiring 600 watts, you'd potentially require a 600 watt ATX 3.0 PSU. But if you were to adapt the same unit to an ATX 2.0 standard, you will require a higher wattage PSU. That's at least 1600 watts or higher to steer clear from the power excursions. Basically, all of your old power supplies for the new generation of NVIDIA GPUs are useless. Um, that's pretty much what it comes down to. You're not going to be able to basically go out, sell all of your 30 series and 20 series cards and just buy the GPUs and plug them into a mining rig with two 1600 watt power supplies and be good to go because this standard is going to make it pretty much impossible for you to do so. So every single rig build with these new GPUs are, from my perspective, and especially from a mining perspective, you're going to have to upgrade to an ATX 3.0 power supply. And potentially that also means that your traditional setup uh, for miners of basically for GPUs purchasing the server power supplies with breakout boards may not be advised either. Many will balk at retiring their power supply and wonder why excursions matter so much. Aren't power excursions just GPU makers breaking the rules and exceeding power consumption? After all, we'd agree with that outlook, but to limit the, those extremely short excursions would mean also limiting GPU performance. It's also, it's also clear we've been right at the very limit of power supply capabilities for quite some time. Anecdotal reports of the GeForce RTX 3080 and 3080 Ti crashing systems due to transient voltage spikes have been popping up for some time. While the vast majority of gamers were fine, it would appear certain power supplies or system configurations just couldn't handle the same power excursions. Even worse, add-in board makers would know they were exceeding power for microscopic amounts of time, but they really had no idea what the varying design of power supplies could handle. Now these power spikes can be considered as GPU makers breaking the power limits of their own cards, but transient voltage spikes have been seen as an issue on high-end cards for quite some time now, reports PC World. The ATX 3.0 standard will provide an incentive to graphics card AIBs to formalize excursions so that they can once again have boundaries to follow when working on their latest graphics card design. Here is a table of the PCIe, AIC, and PSU power budget used for peak power excursion test cases. And you basically have your uh, AIC power for the PCIe, the CPU continuous power, and then a rest of platform, and then your PSU rated size. So if we go all the way up to 600, you see the 1200 here. The Goldilocks zone seems to be the 1000 to 1200 watt range for the next gen high-end graphics card. So if you're planning to build a new gaming PC with either the 4090 or the 7900 XT, you better make sure your PSU, uh, to get a PSU within the respective wattage range of the ATX 3.0 standard. Currently, several PSU makers such as MSI, ASUS, Gigabyte, FSP, Group, and Cooler Master have announced their PCIe Gen 5 and ATX 3.0 compliant designs. Now, I did also want to talk about this has been a problem in the past already with these excursions, possibly flipping breakers if you're running them for mining and so on. And where it is really noticeable is actually within specific algorithms, algorithms that basically utilize the core. Which algorithms would be examples of these? Flux is one, Ravencoin is another. The, and that's because usually these pi power spikes are due to basically core usage, not necessarily memory usage to the same extent. This is why when we first saw a lot of people switching over to flux, there were a lot of complaints of blown power supplies, flipped breakers, and burned, burned power supply units. And this is why I put out a huge warning when we were doing the kind of move over to flux and testing it because Essentially, you had huge problems there. So it's going to be even worse with the 4000 series, potentially with the 7000 series from AMD as well. 
And it won't be advisable, like I said, to just go ahead and swap out your 3000 series cards for 4000 series cards and utilize the same power supplies. You will need to upgrade to the new ATX 3.0 standard potentially for this to be something that you can utilize for mining. It's definitely going to get interesting. I'd like to hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below as well as within, of course, the live chat. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.